Can you give people some intuition about the the difference between writing on pen and paper versus using lean programming language? How hard is it to formalize right. a statement? So lean, a lot of mathematicians were involved in the design of lean. So it's, it's designed so that um, individual lines of code resemble individual lines of a mathematical argument. Like you might want to introduce a variable, you want to, want to prove a contradiction, you, you're, uh, um, um, there are various standard things that you can do, and, and it, it's, it's written so it, ideally it should be like a one-to-one -one correspondence. In practice, it isn't because Lean is like explaining a proof to an extremely pedantic colleague who will, <laughs> will point out, okay, did you really mean this? Like, what, what happens if this is zero? Okay, um, did you, how do you justify this? Um, so Lean has a lot of automation in it, um, to try to to uh, to be less annoying. Um, so, for example, um, every mathematical object has to come with a type. Like if I if I, if I talk about x, is x a real number or um, a, a, a natural number or, or a function or something? Um, it, if you write things informally, it's, um, it's often in some context. You say you know um, clearly x is equal to uh, let x be the sum of y and z, and y and z were already real numbers, so x should also be a real number. Um, so Lean can do a lot of that. Um, but every so often it, it says, wait a minute, uh, can you tell me more about what this object is, uh, what, what type of object it is? So you have to think more um, at a philosophical level, well, not just sort of the computations that you're doing, but sort of what each object actually um, is in, in some sense. Is it using something like LLMs to do uh, the type inference or like you mentioned with the real number? It's, it's using much more traditional, what's called good old fashioned AI. You can represent all these things as trees, and there's always algorithm to match one tree to another tree. So it's actually doable to figure out if something is a, a real number or yeah, a natural number. Yeah, or... every object sort of comes with a history of where it came from, and you can you can kind of trace. It. Oh, I see. Um, okay. Yeah, so yeah, it, it's it's designed for reliability. So uh, modern AIs are not used in. It's a disjoint technology. People are beginning to use AIs on top of Lean. So when a mathematician tries to program. Um, a proof in, in Lean, um, often there's a step, okay, now I want to use um, the fundamental theorem of calculus, say, okay, to do the next step. So the Lean developers have built this, this massive project called Methylib, a, a collection of tens of thousands of useful facts about mathematical objects. And somewhere in there is the fundamental theorem of calculus, but you need to find it. So a lot of the bottleneck now is actually lemma search. You know, there's a tool that, that you know is in there somewhere. And you need to find it, um, and so you can. There are various search engines specialized for Mathlib that you can do, um, but there's now these large language models that you can say, okay, um, "I need the fundamental theorem calculus at this point," and it's like, "Okay, uh, um, uh, for example, um, when I code, I have GitHub Copilot installed as a plugin to my IDE, and it scans my text and it sees what I need. It says, you know, I might even type. Okay, now I need to use the fundamental theorem calculus. Okay, and then it, it might suggest, okay, try this." And like maybe 25% of the time, it works exactly. And then another 10, 15% of the time, it doesn't quite work, but it, it, it's close enough that I can say, oh, yeah, if I just change it here and here, it will work. And then like half the time, it gives me complete rubbish. Um, so, but people are beginning to use AIs a little bit on top, um, yeah, mostly on the level of basically fancy autocomplete. Um, that uh, you can type half of one line of a proof and it will find, it will tell you. Yeah, but, but a fancy, especially fancy with the sort of capital letter F, is. Uh... Uh, remove some of the friction yeah. mathematician might feel when they move from pen and paper to formalizing. Yes, yeah. So right now I estimate that the effort, time and effort taken to formalize a proof is about 10 times the amount taken to, to write it out. But yeah, so it's doable, but uh, you don't, it's it's annoying, but doesn't it like kill the whole vibe of being a mathematician? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just so I mean, it, having a pedantic coworker, <laughs> right? Yeah, if if that was the only aspect of it, okay, but um. Okay, there, there's some there, there's some things where it's actually more pleasant to do things formally. So there was, a, there was a theorem I formalized, and there was a certain constant twelve um, that that came out of, at um, in in the final statement, and so this twelve had to be carried all through the proof, um, and like everything had to be checked that it was all the all these other numbers that had to be consistent with this final number twelve. And then, so we wrote a paper through this theorem with this number 12. And then a few weeks later, someone said, oh, we can actually improve this 12 to an 11 by reworking some of these steps. And when this happens with pen and paper, um, like every time you change a parameter, you have to check line by line that every single line of your proof still works. And there can be subtle things that you didn't quite realize, some properties on number 12 that you didn't even realize that you were taking advantage of. And so a proof can break down at a subtle place. Um, so we had formalized the proof with this constant 12. And then when this, this new paper came out, uh, we said, oh, okay, let's, uh, so that took like three weeks to formalize, uh, and, and like 20 people to formalize this, this, this original proof. I said, oh, but now, now let's, let's um, 
uh, uh, let's update the twelve to eleven. And what you can do with Lean is that you just in your headline theorem you you change the twelve to eleven, you run the compiler, and like of the thousands of lines of code you have, ninety percent of them still work, and there's a couple that are lined in red. Now I can't justify these, these steps, but it, it immediately isolates which steps you need to change. But you can skip over everything, which which works just fine. Um, and if you program things correctly um, with sort of good programming practices, most of your lines will not be read, um, and there'll just be a few places where you. I mean, if, if you don't hard code your constants, but you sort of uh, mm -hmm. um, um, you use smart tactics and so forth, yeah, you can, you can localize um, the things you need to change to, to a, a very small um, period of time. So it's like within a day or two, we had updated our proof. Because this is a very quick process. You, um, you make a change. There are ten things now that don't work. For each one, you, you make a change, and now there's five more things that don't work. But but the process converges much more smoothly than with pen and paper. So that's for writing. Are you able to read it? Like if somebody else sends a proof, are you able to like how? What's what's the uh, versus paper and? Yeah. So the proofs are longer, but each individual piece is easier to read. So um, if you take a math paper and you jump to page 27 and you look at paragraph 6 and you have a line of, of, of text of math, I often can't read it immediately because it assumes various definitions which I have to, to go back and, and maybe on 10 pages earlier this was defined and this, um, the proof is scattered all over the place and you basically are forced to read fairly sequentially. Um, it's, it's not like say a novel where like you know in theory you could you know, open up a novel halfway through and, and start reading. There's a lot of context but when a proof in Lean, if you put your cursor on a line of code, every single object there, you can hover over it, and it would, it would say what it is, where it came from, what, where the stuff is justified. You can trace things back much easier than sort of flipping through a, a math paper. So one thing that Lean really enables is actually collaborating on proofs at a really atomic scale that you really couldn't do in the past. So traditionally, with pen and paper, um, when you want to collaborate with another mathematician, um, Either you do it at a blackboard where you um, you can really interact, but if you're doing it sort of by email or something, um, basically, yeah, yeah, you have to segment it. So I'm going to I'm going to finish section three, you do section four, but uh, you can't really sort of work on the same thing uh, collaboratively at the same time. But with Lean, you can be trying to formalize some portion of the proof and say, oh, I got stuck at line 67 here. I need to prove this thing, but it, it doesn't quite work. Here's the, like the three lines of code I'm having trouble with. Um, but because all the context is there, someone else can say, oh, okay, I recognize what you need to do. You need to, to, to apply this trick or this tool. And you can do extremely atomic level conversations. So if, because of Lean, I can collaborate you know, with dozens of people across the world, most of whom I don't have never met in person. Um, and I may not know actually even whether they're, um, how reliable they are in, 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 their, um, um, in, in the proof they give me, but Lean gives me a certificate of, of, of trust. Um, so I can, do, I can do trustless mathematics.